AP Misfortune played in Master Tier Solo Queue by a professional League of Legends player, and it somehow even works. Not AP Support Misfortune by the way, but AP Misfortune in the AD carry position. At first I thought it was a joke when Cloud9's strategy coach Vega V2 posted this on Twitter, but it seems like he is dead serious. Despite Misfortune's terrible AP ratios, this specific AP Misfortune playstyle apparently has a positive impact on your win rate. So yeah, hello fellow Misfortunates. I've never thought this would be possible, but AP Misfortune is a thing now, and in this video I will break down the strategy for you, so you can decide whether you want to try it out for yourselves. I sifted through Vega V2's AP Misfortune replays to see exactly what he does and how he makes it work, and while the playstyle definitely has some glaring weaknesses as you will see, it also has unexpected benefits. For example, it comes with a truly unique item combo with which AP Misfortune can hard counter the current metagame. But first things first, what does Misfortune actually get from purchasing ability power? What is the payoff? So Misfortune has ability power ratios on 3 out of her 5 spells, namely her Q, her E and her ultimate. On E, the payoff is quite obvious, since this ability's damage exclusively scales with ability power and with nothing else, but things start getting tricky when looking at Q and R. Misfortune's Q damage scales with 100% of your total attack damage and with 35% of your ability power. However, attack damage is more expensive than ability power, so for an easy comparison, let's say we want to increase Q's damage output by 50. AD Misfortune straightforwardly needs to purchase 50 attack damage for this, and 50 attack damage costs 1750 gold. AP Misfortune on the other hand has to purchase 143 ability power for the same 50 damage increase due to the weaker ability power ratio. Now ability power is cheaper than attack damage, but not that much cheaper. In fact, 143 ability power costs you 3110 gold, which means Misfortune's Q damage will suffer hard when you are buying mage items. It is almost twice as expensive to get the same result in the end. But what about Misfortune's ultimate? Well, this ability scales with 75% of your total attack damage and with 20% of your ability power, which is applied by each wave that connects. If we want to get 50 extra damage here, you'd have to pay 2345 gold when building attack damage items and 5438 gold for the same damage increase with mage items. Your passive and your W also benefit from attack damage items, but not at all from ability power, so you are definitely paying a steep price with each mage item you buy. And for the longest time I thought that this would be AP Misfortune's fatal flaw, but Vega V2 is proving me wrong here. If you adapt your playstyle, fully embracing the fact that power is shifted towards your E and away from all your other spells, while also making clever use of unique item effects, you can in fact make AP Misfortune work. Misfortune's E is actually an amazing spell during the lane phase, and with all the mana, ability haste and ability power from mage items, it gets outright oppressive to play against. In this game here for example, Draven doesn't even get to lane properly, because the poke damage coming from Misfortune and Karma is just way too high. An all-in champion like Draven just cannot function properly when he is consistently kept at low health, since health is your most important resource for all-in fights. You will always hold lane priority by spamming Make It Rain in the early game with AP items, and if you use its massive range to your advantage, the enemy won't have any counterplay here whatsoever. So yes, Make It Rain effectively lets you win your lane for free, and by rushing Leandri's Anguish for your first item, Make It Rain suddenly turns into a highly potent sieging tool once lane phase is over. AP Misfortune doesn't work because ability power would somehow be good on her. We've just done the math, ability power straight up sucks. Instead it is the unique item effects that are your actual payoff for doing this. Leandri is already a perfect example here since the burn damage gets applied and reapplied for as long as an enemy is standing in your E or your ultimate, and when they manage to walk out it still lingers for 4 additional seconds. This damage truly adds up over the course of the game, and due to item effects like this, AP Misfortune is highly likely to just top the damage charts at the end of the game despite her terrible AP ratios. I will talk more in depth about your exact itemization options later in the video, but it is actually at this point that I would like to introduce you to AP Misfortune's unique item combo that I briefly mentioned earlier. Your mythic item Leandris is the first piece of this combo, and the second piece is the item Serpent's Fang. AP Misfortune is probably the only champion in the game who can build both of these items without trolling. All other Leandris users cannot make use of Serpent's Fang's stat profile at all, but Misfortune of course converts the attack damage and lethality incredibly well, unlocking the unique Serpent's Leandris interaction. 
Shielding effects are everywhere in the current metagame and many top tier champions are relying heavily on them. Serpent's Fang with its Shield Reaver passive is really the only answer, but with this two item combo, Misfortune can apply it to the entire enemy team basically forever. Shield Reaver triggers on literally any source of damage, including Leandri's burn damage. This means hitting an opponent with a spell gives you 7 seconds of shielding reduction on them, since Leandri's burn reapplies Serpent's Fang with every tick, and after Leandri's 4 seconds duration, the effect still lingers for another 3 seconds. You are spamming Make It Rain on multiple enemies on cooldown at this stage of the game, and with all your ability haste, Make It Rain will be ready again before Serpent's Fang even wears off. Let's play a little game here, shall we? Vega V2 has bought a first item Leandris into a second item Serpent's Fang against an enemy team with Lulu support and Karma mid for their only shielding champions. And now it is your turn to write a comment and have an educated guess how much shielding the Serpent's Fang Leandri combo will deny in a 40 minutes game. I'll give you the correct answer at the end of the video, so stay tuned. But okay, before we get too excited here, we must also talk about AP Misfortune's weaknesses and how you can play around them to minimize their negative impact. Oh and if this video has been interesting to you so far, please consider taking one second to click the subscribe button, since I have a lot more educational League of Legends content in the making. Thanks. So as I've said, AP Misfortune is shifting power towards your E spell and away from everything else. E is crazy for pushing, sieging and poking, but your all in damage on the other hand suffers heavily. And I really mean heavily. With Lethality or even Crit Misfortune builds, you are probably used to Misfortune's ultimate easily shredding your enemies to pieces. Because of how the math works out, AP Misfortune simply cannot do that. I mean, look at this beautiful ult angle right there. For Lethality Misfortune, this would be a setup for a clean pentakill, but with ability power items, your ultimate barely even tickles. The enemy can pretty much just walk out unscratched. In terms of damage output, AP Misfortune's R is essentially just a glorified version of Make It Rain. However, since you are not forced to buy pure ability power items and instead choose your items based on their useful unique passives, your ultimate can be quite strong in the late game when you bought some attack damage items too, such as the aforementioned Serpent's Fang for example. So in the super late game, your ultimate can be a little more threatening and the enemy cannot simply walk through it anymore if you have some attack damage behind it. Especially in combination with your strong Make It Rain with its solid AP ratio, your all-in combo will actually be meaningful in terms of burst damage. However, do not make the mistake of overestimating this. Your ultimate is still relatively weak, and especially when you are used to its crit or lethality version, it is very easy to miscalculate and die. Here for example, Vega V2 tries to go all in with his ER combo, but AP Misfortune simply cannot win in situations like these. All ins must be avoided, as you instead want to wear down your opponents over time by spamming Make It Rain. The burst damage is simply not there. Due to that, the opposing AD carry also will outscale you in the very late game. They just have consistently high DPS with their crit items, whereas you have to always play around your E cooldown. AP Misfortune's Q and passive are relatively weak, and your W does almost nothing for your damage output. All in fights will never be in your favor because of this, and you instead have to be patient and bide your time. Compared to all other carries, your burst damage is effectively zero, and if you ignore this piece of advice, you will get killed over and over again. And yes, defensive mage items like Zonya's Hourglass are quite broken in the right circumstances, but you are still also relatively squishy in addition to having no burst damage. One misstep and you will get killed from 100 to 0 in one rotation. Not fun, don't do it, play to your own strengths, not to your enemies. So yeah, your ultimate might look feeble, but you are effectively a control mage. Stay at max range, spam your E and use your R as a zoning tool or for chip damage. And when I say stay at max range, I mean stay at max range. Your E by itself has crazy utility and spam potential and you will be highly useful with it. But you are still an immobile and squishy mage, so if you carelessly walk towards the front line... Yeah, this will happen. Okay, so I guess by now I got the point across that Make It Rain is the central aspect of your playstyle if you want to be successful with AP Misfortune. You max this ability first, of course, and while Vega V2 has been experimenting with Q max second, W max second, and with a mix of both, I recommend that you max Q second for the lower cooldown and leave W at one skill point until last. It is also probably not surprising for you that your best rune page is Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Absolute Focus, and Scorch, with Magical Footwear and Biscuit Delivery secondary. Arcane Comet simply has perfect synergy with Misfortune's E, and especially during the lane phase, the added poke damage matters a lot. 
For the same reason, you also take Scorch, further increasing your poke damage, making your lane phase truly oppressive. Gathering Storm wouldn't be worth it anyway, since your raw ability power ratios are extremely weak for your late game scalings. Absolute Focus gives your E some extra bonus damage in lane, which is why Vega V2 takes it, but Transcendence is definitely a viable alternative. Now, Make It Rain is a super broken spell, only balanced through its enormous mana cost. Therefore, you want both Mana Flow Band and Biscuit Delivery, since there's probably nothing more useless than an AP Misfortune out of mana. Magical Footwear is a great rune in general, since it saves you 300 gold. Misfortune also doesn't need boots early, as you get plenty of movement speed even from just one point in W. So now that we got the runes out of the way, let's look at the most interesting aspect of AP Misfortune, which is your itemization. You always start the game with Doran's Ring and two health potions. Doran's Ring obviously increases your poke damage with Make a Drain, and between its built-in mana regeneration and your Biscuit mana, you can already be very trigger happy with your E. On your first base, you want to buy Tear of the Goddess and start working towards Leandri's Anguish. Tear and Leandri components definitely solve all your mana problems forever, so now you can spam all your spells as much as you want. If you don't need a second item Serpent's Fang in a game, you next upgrade Tear of the Goddess to Mira Mana. Yes, Mira Mana is essentially the duct tape that holds together this mess we call AP Misfortune. Converting all the mana from your runes and your mythic item into bonus AD and on spell damage allows you to get actual value from your other four abilities. The on spell effect still directly buffs your E damage too, and this item is also another crucial source of ability haste. After upgrading your boots to lucidity boots, your core build is complete, and now you have plenty of options to choose from and with which you can counter the enemy team composition. You actually only have three viable mage items you should consider, since an item's unique passive or active effect always has to be strong enough to justify sinking money into the ability power stat. Else, it just wouldn't be worth it. The first one is Crown of the Shattered Queen, which can be bought in some matchups instead of Leandri's Anguish. While Leandri's damage output is incredible, sometimes the extra protection from Crown will be even more valuable for you. An enemy team full of assassins has more than enough target access to get to you, even if you position perfectly. You don't deal any damage when you're dead, but Crown makes opposing hard engages completely useless as long as you stay grouped. You'll simply live through the burst while you and your team can kill the overextended assassin. Zonya's Hourglass is another strong defensive option that doesn't force you to sacrifice your mythic slot. It is the perfect item to buy when Crown would be overkill, which is actually most of the time. Just turn golden when the enemy overcommits and watch them suffer. Demonic Embrace is the perfect tank slayer item, adding its burn effect on top of Leandri's burn, and it is strong with Misfortune's E spell for exactly the same reason as Leandri. Another item you can buy to deal with tanks is Black Cleaver. The armor shred is crazy for your ultimate, since it still always deals physical damage no matter how many AP items you buy. Your teammates also benefit from Cleaver's effect, so you should be looking for team synergies there. Additionally, this item comes with 30 ability haste, making e-spam even more consistent. Serpent's Fang and Kempunk Chainsword deny shielding and healing respectively, completely countering enchanter compositions. The item Ravenous Hydra is also a consideration since it is your only option for lifesteal. You have zero health regeneration without it, and if the enemy can poke too, you will need some form of staying power. Hydra's passive also adds more damage to your spells while granting valuable ability haste at the same time. Make sure to look at both teams in order to optimally mix and match between all your item options. Since it is very easy to pick the wrong item at some point, this playstyle is highly skill intensive, but also highly rewarding and a lot of fun when it works. I haven't forgotten about our little Serpent's Fang guessing game by the way. So before you click the link on your screen, which will take you to a full AP Misfortune game with educational live commentary on my second channel, I want to let you know that Serpent's Fang dealt almost 10,000 damage in the Lulu Karma game. Was your guess accurate?